Let's crack open a fresh page and I'll show you how we can make some bubbles finally. So I'll close this mother and do not save, file new. And let's just put some letters down, black font, this font's fine, whatever. And it's really too big, but I'm, I'll resize it when I'm done. These are some great words. Okay, so I'm gonna put this kind of in the center and make it smaller. And I didn't, I haven't changed any of the settings. I, I would normally have these all default to center and yeah, that's fine for now. And why don't I actually uh, draw in a quick face or just eyes so we have something to point to when I get to the tails. Um, so let me grab a pen and I'll just use red, whatever. Go to the layer below the words and I'll just put some eyes. Okay, somebody talking. That works for me. And let's go back to this and we'll take a look at our first bubble tools or our balloon tools, as they may be called. So the ellipse balloon. Whoa. Uh, looking at the colors here, this is our preview. Uh, we, we can see that it's not black and white. I'm going to make it black and white. Okay, so that's a more uh, traditional balloon. Although color balloons can have definitely have their use. I just want to show you the most uh, basic settings for this and you can modify it once you get to know it. So I usually have anti-aliasing all the way up. Brush size is going to be the thickness of the balloon. Actually, I'm not even going to tweak this right now. I'm just going to show you and then I'll, I'll mess with it. So uh, the setting though that kind of matters is create new layer or add to selected layer. If it's add to selected layer, it's going to be included as the same level as these these words and if it's a separate layer and create a new layer it's going to be a separate layer so i'll just keep it uh add to selected layer for now and I, I use both it just depends on what i'm up to but uh basically yeah you just drag it around the words and release now that balloon is very thin i would i would prefer a much thicker balloon i think so to change it i can just press o and that gives me the settings. I could also change the colors now or whatever. Uh, I'll just pump it up to a more thick and noticeable color. And yeah, that is the ellipse balloon. There's no tail with that, obviously. So let's look at our other tools as well. Um, back to the text balloon. So the curve balloon, I'm going to make this a uh, well, I can actually add it to selected layer because I can actually extend it on this balloon if I want to. So the curve balloon is just a you know a curve tool that goes like that. So for some reason it didn't add it to the selected layer that I was on. Sometimes these can be kind of wonky, and uh, I'll actually show you how you can add these two together. Now I'll just show you now. Just select them both and you know combine select the layers now you say oh the the thickness of this line isn't the same well if you press o now it selects everything and i can just change it for some reason if i just change it off one then it matches them so now they're the same thickness and if you're ever unsure you can just change it and then return it to a new value and it'll definitely be the same Okay, so keep going. Let's see what else we have. Oh, with the uh, curved balloon, where was it? Uh, I, I said I mentioned this before, but if you make your your balloon with as few points as possible, it'll, it'll get a much cleaner uh, shape. Compare that to this, and I think you can see that this one's a little smoother. But even this is not perfect. And if I wanted to change it, I can just press O, and then click on the edge of the balloon and you'll get your original points and you can manipulate it. So very helpful. I usually always resize my balloons afterward and tweak them and kind of get them just how I like them. And uh, I'll do that when we, when I finish this page, but 
or finish this example pointing to the head. Okay, so let's keep going. So that is the curve balloon. Next we have the balloon pen, which is just basically, yeah, a pen that whatever shape you make will turn into a balloon. And I often use this for my, uh, for my tails, because I think they get better tails than the actual tail tool, the balloon tail tool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think I can, I can size it a lot better. So that's probably how I would do my balloon there. And then to get it to be the same size, I could just, uh, you know, resize it. And there you go. Now, what else we have? Yeah, I said the balloon tail. I don't really use this tool because it just doesn't, I, I can never get it the width how I like it. And you can adjust it after the fact by clicking O and changing it within, but it's just, I don't know. I prefer the kind of naturalness of the balloon pen and I tend to use that. I, I usually use the curve balloon to make my my text balloons and then the balloon pen to get the, the tails to the person. We also have a thought balloon tail that I also do not use and I'll show you what I use instead in a minute, but let me show you how this does work if you do want to use it. You can change the width and basically you're going to just draw out your balloons and uh, I never get this looking how I like, so I just, I mean, you can tweak it and mess with the settings, but I just, I don't even bother. It's, it's not what I like and it's, it's a mess. I actually use the ellipse balloon for my thought balloon. So let me show you how I would do a thought balloon from scratch. Let's say I was going to put something here like, uh, this is way too large. That sounds like a good thought. So this is... I think it's too, I didn't, I didn't talk about this, but I'm always considering when I lay out my words, um, how the, I can make them look about like a, uh, approximately like a, uh, circle. So if, if I have too many words on one line or if I, I just need to play around with it sometimes, but, uh, I still haven't changed the settings to make this centered, centered all. <laughs> And okay, so whatever, that's, that's fine text. And I want to add a thought balloon now. So usually what I do to get a thought balloon, I tend to use the balloon pen for the, the edge of the balloon. So let me zoom in. And I usually work from within and go kind of like this and just kind of shape it without. Oh, you know what? I didn't also mention you have materials that you can use these kind of prefabricated balloons that I never use, but I, I just prefer doing this by hand. You know, some artists actually prefer doing their lettering by hand too, but that's, that's a little too much work for me. And I don't have the, um, I guess the patience or desire to do that. It's, I'm happy enough with the fonts that I use that whatever, <laughs> it just seems like a lot of extra work that I don't want to do. Um, so anyways, let's say I, I got this, this thought balloon looking how I wanted. That's fine. And, uh, I'm going to change the, th the thickness once I finish it, but I need my, my bubbles going to this guy, usually like two or three bubbles in a thought balloon, I would say. Let's move it a little closer too. So I'm going to drag this over to here. And now I'm going to switch to the, the ellipse balloon actually. And this is what I use the ellipse balloon for is these bubbles. Cause they're, they're about what I want my thought balloons to look like. And I try and get them all to look about the same kind of ratio, just kind of different sizes. And that's probably what I would use. And then if I want to change the thickness, I would just, you know, amp it up a little. And there is my thought balloon. And I would probably, in this other one, I would get rid of this. Uh, you can get rid of sections too, even though this is one layer, you can select different parts and press like control and just delete different parts. So anything that you originally added can be selected. And these are all manip 
able to be manipulated and uh, it's pretty flexible once you learn to use it it just takes a little uh, ingenuity to kind of figure out which ones you like and what how you want your your text to look so play around with it and uh also you can you can like add sections on each so if i wanted to use just the ellipse balloon to you know i can make a few any kind of weird shapes so there's no real limit on it and also i didn't mention this the uh the ellipse balloon also contains the square which is not an ellipse so it's kind of funny that it's under the ellipse but if you're going to be using it for a caption you probably get, use this and then you know maybe give it a different color or uh oops the color you know you could change the background to whatever oh i actually i accidentally put it on the same layer and it changed everything but uh i think you get the idea and then you can put your lettering in here and so on so those are your balloon tools. And I've seen, you know, artists use pretty much all these to make their balloons. And some balloons look really almost mechanical, like a human barely even did it. And some balloons look like uh, if somebody used the balloon tool to just use their, uh, to make dialogue, like they may get some really wild shapes. And that's, that's cool. You can vary it up or you can go for consistency. It's, it's really just a matter of finding the look that matches your style and lettering that has the tone that you want. Because lettering is really important for, you know, getting tone across it. Like, if, remember that word that we had with the, uh, the the alien encounters or whatever font? That looked, has a totally different feel from this Alex Toth font. So uh, just explore and try and realize that lettering and bubbling is an art too unto itself. One other thing I wanted to mention is that sometimes when you're creating a new bubble, it will just automatically connect to some old bubble on the same panel or the same page. And even when it's on uh, create a new layer, it, it still might do that for some reason. And if it does do that and you want it to not do that, <laughs> Uh, you can always lock the older bubbles and that will make sure that it is not added to them because once they're locked, uh, nothing can be done with them until you unlock it. So keep that in mind.